Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be working on this winter themed burst tumbler. This is inspired by Trina from Diamonds and Dust. She did a really pretty version of this in black and gray. Um, and I thought that I would go ahead and do this in Christmas themed. As always, we're starting out with a sanded and spray painted base. This one you do want to be very careful about what your uh, spray paint looks like because for the most part it's not going to be covered up with glitter. Um, the paint is going to be a part of this design. So just make sure you're not getting any uh, dripping or anything like that because it will show through the epoxy. The cup that I'm working with right now is a 30 ounce skinny which is about 9 inches tall. I left a two and a half inch gap at both the top and the bottom of this cup and then left the remainder for this printed vinyl. This is from North 80. Her shop at this time, it is Christmas Eve 2022. Her shop is on vacation, so you're not gonna be able to snag this until I believe next week when she opens back up. Um, but this design is still available. I did check this is a print from last year. Um, but it is available for you to purchase. So now that we have spray painted the base ivory, let that dry and measured out the vinyl, I'm going to go in with my striping assistant tool. This is from the Amy's Make Everything. I do have a discount code with them. It is MITTEN in all capital letters. That will save you 10%. These only run about 10 bucks anyway, so it won't save too much cash, but it's definitely worth the investment. As I've mentioned before, I use this for every single stripe cup that I do, and I do a ton of them. This is a huge time saver. I just stick my Sharpie in there, and it creates perfect straight lines every single time. So. Definitely worth the investment if you do any sort of striping cups. Um, it's probably my favorite tool in my entire craft room. So now that I've got my lines marked off, I'm just gonna go in and make sure that my vinyl is laying straight with the lines that I marked off. And then we are going to apply this using the hinge method. If you don't know what that is, uh, you basically just take a little, probably an inch piece or so of the backing off the vinyl um, and then you're going to just push it down while the backing pulls itself off. Um, the backing will use the cup as kind of a guide, I guess I would say. Um, it'll just roll itself right off. So it's very easy to do and it keeps you from getting any stickies on your vinyl or anything like that. Um, and allows you to relay it and rework it if you need to. So now we're going in with the Crystal Act glitter glue. You don't need very much of this because you're just using a chunky glitter. You just basically need to adhere uh, that glitter to the cup. You don't want to spread it down into the paint that's not going to be covered in glitter because there's a chance that it could be shown through. Um, it'll be maybe streaky-ish. Um, if it's kind of clumped up. So just make sure that you're using a small amount, unlike me, who <laughs> used way too much. Um, <laughs> but it turned out fine, so we're good. So when I applied this, I tried to make sure, first of all, that I didn't get it on the vinyl because I didn't want any glitter to show on the vinyl. Uh, and second of all, I tried to make sure that it was kind of like a when I was applying the glue, it was like a kind of a messy brush stroke kind of a thing. I didn't want it to be um, like a solid flush line for the glitter to end on because then you're going to have more of a full coverage look as opposed to an ombre look. Um, and that's not what we're going for. We're just looking for a very short fade and it's very easy to, as you'll see, um, get the glitter all kind of clumped up and chunky and <laughs> that's not what we were going for so just be careful you can always add more it's very hard to take away if you are too heavy-handed just be cautious of that the glitter that i'm applying is called toasted from create by firefly i do have a discount code that is mitten 15 for 15 percent off uh, it's like a medium chunky it's got like 
gold, like light champagne and a little bit of a darker gold tone to it. It was super, super pretty and it complemented the ivory really well. Um, so definitely a good choice for that if this is the design that you're wanting to replicate. Um, it was a great glitter to put on this paint and this vinyl. So now that I've got my glitter the way that I want it, I'm going to go through with just a finger and very, very, very lightly just tap the glitter down so we're not going to have any pokey bits sticking up once that epoxy goes on. Um, this shouldn't take too many coats considering it's vinyl and paint at the tops and bottom uh, of the cup, so it should probably only take two coats as long as your chunky glitter is laid down flat. Um, and then we're gonna go in with two separate pieces of this textured gold vinyl. Uh, one is 0 0.20 by 11 and a half width. The other one is 0 0.08 by 11 and a half width. And I'm gonna put the thicker of the two stripes right where the vinyl meets the glitter on both the top and the bottom. And then I'm gonna go in with that 0 0.08 vinyl right below I would leave probably a millimeter or two gapping between uh, the two pieces of vinyl. And then I cut out this decal from Diamonds and Dust. Um, this is available in her shop. I cut it out at four inches wide for this 30 ounce. I would recommend probably three to three and a half inches wide if you're using a 20 ounce skinny. Um, I cut it on an ivory for, well, it's kind of a tan color, I guess, um, for the offset. And then I used that same gold uh, textured vinyl that I'm using for the striping for the um, remainder of that decal. And you'll see that I really struggled laying this decal down. I don't know why. I'm usually pretty good at it. For whatever reason, this thing was giving me a whole bunch of trouble. So um, I would say probably just cut your decal into three separate pieces if you're doing an offset on this. Um, <laughs> luckily, I was able to save it, but it was a pain in the butt. So save yourself the trouble, unlike me, and do them separately.
All right, so once the decal was on, I put this on my turner and like usual, I put a coat of polycrylic over it anytime I have any metallic vinyl that I'm using or if I'm doing an offset or anything like that, I always go over my vinyl just to make sure it doesn't lift under the epoxy. Um, and I did one final coat on this and it was completely done. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you would like to join my Facebook group that is Mitten Makers. I will link that in the description box as well. I wish you guys all a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I will see you next weekend.